morning, dearly guy. Good morning. Hey guys, I brought you to work with me today on this Friday. It is 6.55 in the morning. I'm already three hours into my day, which is insane. Uh, I decided to bring you with me today because I'm going to have one of my friends on the show. Uh, Nelson Dellis is my friend from the CrossFit gym. And the reason we're having him on, besides the fact that he's pretty cool, is Monday night he's going to be on the show called Superhuman that plays on Fox. So Nelson's official title, if you will, is four-time USA memory champion. Here's a picture of him kind of doing his thing. They wear these headphones and sunglasses to keep out distractions as they try to memorize things quickly in a fast amount of time, like a deck of cards, faces, names, all sorts. He'll talk about it. He's better at explaining it. Um, I met Nelson at the gym, which is one of the many reasons that I love CrossFit, that I feel like I actually know and talk to a lot of the people I go to the gym with. Rather, when you kind of go to a regular gym, uh, you don't really talk to people as much. And a lot of the time, women, if they do talk to you, they're just bothering you and, hey, you need help with that. So I feel like there's a good sense of community in our gym. Uh, Nelson, I believe, was inspired to start doing this and learning like memory tricks and applying them and competing in them because unfortunately he lost his grandmother to Alzheimer's back in 2009 um, and he's also a big like outdoor adventure climber enthusiast activist so he does something called climb for memory so there's some cool videos of him on the summit of mount everest where he's memorizing a deck of cards quickly and he you know uses that to bring attention to alzheimer's so it's all pretty cool that he ties all of it in together and i remember asking him like at what point did you kind of just quit a regular nine to five job and realize you know this is what i want to do and i loved what he said he said you know i had just finished climbing mount everest and i came back and i'm sitting in my cubicle in boston at my job and thought man, I can't just sit here after being out in the world like that. And I thought that was really neat because, you know, a desk job can be hard and it's not for everybody. And especially when you've gone out and done something cool like that. Like, how do you come back to just like pushing papers and writing things down? So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, we'll have him on the show. We're going to talk about... Um, the TV show he's on, talk about, you know, what he does, because I know he gets a lot of annoying questions where people are like, so you just like remember everything? Do you remember what everybody says all the time? And it's just like a job, you know, you do it when you're doing the job. It's not like he's always like memorizing every single word when you're talking to him. Um, and then Julie, my co-host, has an awful memory, which she likes to blame on mom brain. I like to blame it on the fact that she never writes anything down. So Nelson's going to try and help her remember something like a grocery list, give her tricks on how to apply it to like everyday life so waiting on Nelson he's gonna be showing up soon and uh, hopefully that'll be kind of cool and you can see his brain work it's magic um, he's also like a six foot four ginger so it's kind of hard to miss and he's really good at CrossFit which is kind of weird because if you know anything about CrossFit it's kind of meant for short people so the fact that he's good makes me a little mad anyway I'll catch up with you in the next clip all right on my way to grab Nelson what's up what's how are you <laughs> I didn't dress up because it's radio. Oh, cool, thanks. We don't have like videos and stuff, right? Uh, no, we can take pictures and videos. So welcome, we have four stations here. And then this is Julie. That's cool. Look at her, she's so radio. She's on the phone Hi. in a break. Are we live here? How are you? <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet Good you. Good to meet you, Nelson. I've heard a lot about you. Thank you. <laughs> Julie Guy, Evelyn Curry, happy Friday. Happy Friday. We got a special in studio guest. Yeah. I make a grocery list. Yeah. I take I take it with me. On Not only paper. is it on yeah. my phone, but it's in the in a piece of paper. And I still forget. Yeah. She goes to Publix like four times a week. Yeah, yeah. I live yeah. there. I don't know why I don't work there. But so how could I remember my grocery list? One is you gotta take the that list of, of items yeah. and turn them into pictures you can visualize. So, oh, you wanna make it as crazy and bizarre as possible. So oh, eggs, okay. let's say eggs. Just imagine like um Cracking eggs and just the eggs in the skillet is like making a mess on the floor. Yeah, making a mess on the floor. Okay. Like you really want to make crazy. it uncomfortable and, and yeah, she bizarre. Hates okay. not, don't just visualize an, an egg sitting there. Okay. That's kind of boring and okay. memorable, not memorable. Right? Okay. Um, and then maybe milk. Right. All you right. can maybe picture a, a cow and his utter spewing. spewing milk oh, all over. And then I need Clorox wipes. Yeah. To clean all that up. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you have a little. You make a little narrative. Um, it's a little story. Okay. Yeah, and then the second part is, what do you do with those pictures? So right. you got to place them in, in a location that you can access them in your brain later. That's always the problem: is we don't, we know we memorize something, but it's hard for us to retrieve it. To recall you know, it, yeah, yeah. To recall it. So how do you do so that? So there's this technique called the memory palace, where you basically take your house. Imagine your house, 
and you walk from the front door of your house through it to your um, kitchen, to your kitchen, and then to your living room. You make a path through it, and you place those bizarre images uh, at locations along that path. As if you were walking through your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, say the first thing was eggs, and it, you, you start at your front door. I right away just now pictured the eggs cracking on the floor. Throw those eggs or on yeah. the front door, right? It's just dripping right. down your front door. Yeah. Then you enter the doorway. You're in the kitchen. So and, then and there's the cow, cow with the udders. Cow spraying oh. under milk everywhere. <laughs> this right. Is very um, uncomfortable. And so when you go to the grocery store, um, all you have to do instead of looking at your piece of paper with the list is kind of close your eyes and walk through the house again, and you'll be at your front door. That is eggs. so cool. Kitchen. I actually can see oh, that working. Yeah. Our light music, it starts next. It's driven by Geico. It's 822. It's Julie Guy, Evelyn Curry, and our special in-studio guest, Nelson Dellis. So I started climbing mountains around the world. It's a big passion of mine um, to raise awareness and funds for the disease. And through my charity that I founded, uh, Climb for Memory, um, that's how I do that. So Climb, the number four, memory. Dot org. Dot org is yeah. where you can go make a donation. So mm-hmm. you climb, and you're not just climbing like rock climbing walls. No, like Mount Everest and Mount Kilimanjaro. Holy These moly. big mountains, yeah. <laughs> you think? Um, those, like, kind of shows. Are you vlogging right now? Yeah, trying to. It's way too bright for this, though. Know, so this is what happens when you haven't been outside all day, and the first time you see the sun is at 11 a.m. All right, so I'm leaving work. Today was a fun day. Having someone in studio always kind of makes the day go by faster rather than Julie and I just staring at each other and talking for five hours. Um, Got some really good feedback from Nelson on. People said it was interesting. So, that was fun. Good way to end my week. Now, God, my car's so hot. Now, I head home to quickly change, grab the dog, and make it to the gym by 12.10. So it's a little crazy. Um, But yeah, holy crap. Why is this even a... My car says 104 degrees. 104 degrees! Today's workout is gonna be really great. Come here! Come here! Hi! You're my favorite part of coming home. Hi! Oh, you already want me to play? Making myself crazy. Down and read it out, hoping it would save me. I gotta change. Um, yeah, I'm gross. I don't shower right away. <laughs> Partly because it's summertime and I have to walk Piper again later on, so then I end up just waiting to shower. Um, so I think that's gross. I think that's just being practical. I'm gonna whip up a really easy lunch. I'll show it to you guys. It can basically, basically be some rice, beans, chicken. I have some veggies. 
Sometimes I put cauliflower rice in there, just whatever I'm feeling. Um, ever since I started working out at noon, right after work, um, and making lunch later in the day, I pack a protein shake for the gym, just a scoop of protein, some BCAAs, and some water. Uh, I didn't used to do that when I would work out in the afternoon because I had already had lunch, so that's why I'm able to eat, like, not eat lunch until 2.30 because of that protein shake. So I'm going to whip up some lunch now, and I'll show you guys that and devour it. Because I'm lazy, I buy these pre-cut Purdue chicken. <laughs> Whatever. The finished product, and then the absolute best part of my meal. I put a little bit of chocolate almond milk in there and some uh, regular almond milk. And that is my little treat. Okay, actually I lied. This is gonna be my little treat. Chocolate chip cookie from Paleo Bakehouse. I got a August box where they sent me chocolate chip cookie. What else do I have left? I have one fudge cookie left. I have an almond butter and jelly. A blueberry <coughs> wow blueberry lemon thumbprint which I actually ended up liking more than I thought I would it was really good pina colada sun that one was probably my least favorite oh this toasted pecan cookie was my favorite which kind of surprised me and yeah and then another chocolate chip cookie uh, they are gluten-free dairy free preservative free and all natural and they're really good and it's like kind of my mid-afternoon snack that I look forward to because I kind of have a soft spot for sweets, especially ever since we got back from Italy. I feel like because I ate Nutella and dessert every day while I was there, I just have wanted sugar ever since we've been back. So yeah, this is going in my mouth. Hey guys. So as I started editing this vlog, it started to take a new route. After Friday's workout absolutely crushed me mentally and physically, I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit. Not getting caught up in the leaderboard and not getting caught up in comparing yourself to other people. So Friday's workout, which I put up earlier but I'll read again, was five rounds for time with a 20 minute cap. It was 10 alternating dumbbell snatches, 10 pull-ups, 10 squat cleans, 10 handstand push-ups, and 10 box jumps. Well, my handstand push-ups did not go as planned. I did really bad Friday. I did not even finish three rounds in 20 minutes, which is really slow. Um, and a lot of that was because I was really failing on my handstand push-ups. I was really upset Friday when I left the gym. I was mad at how bad I had done. I, had been, I was mad at how I couldn't string all my handstand push-ups together. And then I thought, you know what, back in March, I couldn't even do one of those handstand push-ups. So the fact that Friday I did 30, I should be proud of that. And that's kind of what I want to talk about because it's easy in the moment to get really mad at yourself and to look at the board and look at all the high scores and see what other people are doing. Be like, God, I suck. This is so frustrating. I don't want to cross it anymore. I'm over it. But each score has its own story and the only story you should be worried about is your own. Because I can look at all these other scores and one, I don't know how long that girl's been doing CrossFit. I don't know how much sleep she got last night. I don't know if she's good at gymnastics, but I'm a better runner than her. So I need to just focus on me and how far I've come. Because like I said, six months ago, I couldn't do the handstand push-ups. And yeah, it sucks that Friday I could only string two or three together at a time and I'd fall off the wall. Obviously, it's my weakness and I need to work on it. But leaving the gym, even though I was upset with my score, I knew I had given it my all. And that's what's important, is knowing, did you give your best effort? Did you try your best? Are you doing something all the time to be better? And have you improved? And I could answer all those questions and say, yes, like I know I'm not good at handstand push-ups, but I practice them. I have come a long way with them. I remember the first time I tried to do the handstand push-ups with the two 15-pound plates and the ab mat, because I'd always, I'd always just done it with the ab mat. I couldn't do it. Um, so yeah, I just want to talk about that not, not getting caught up in trying to leaderboard and try to be, you know, 
beating yourself up all the time because again it's your journey about how far you've come what's really helped me keep that in perspective honestly is i started logging all my workouts back in april i have a notebook i write down the workouts i write down the weight i did it i write down my time my reps i write how i felt was i tired was i this and that that felt good that felt easy that felt normal and there's something about writing it and logging it that really makes it stick in my head and i will remember and i will like the other day i wrote down a workout where we did squat cleans at 95 pounds a year ago, I couldn't have done that. To do that many reps at squat cleans at 95 pounds, there's no way my little dear legs would have allowed that. So that's what I wanted to talk about and I hope that you guys can kind of relate a little bit because I know we all beat ourselves up and we wanna be better and oh my God, I suck today, this and that. But if you tried your best and if you've made any kind of improvement or you're trying to improve, that's what you gotta be proud of. And so Friday sucked. <laughs> But you better believe that a year from now or six months from now, I'm gonna retry that workout and I'm gonna kill it because I'm gonna get better and I've gotten better and you'll get better too. You just gotta keep trying. You can't get frustrated. You gotta look at the small victories and not compare yourself to other people who are just like lapping you in the workout. And if I can give you any other advice, is to write down your workouts. It's honestly the best thing I've ever done. So yeah, I figure I'd share that with you guys and talk about how I, you know, I'm not always mentally strong and have the best day in the gym especially on a friday after four days of training and like six hours of sleep of night at night like i do the best that i can so and i know that all of you are and that's all we can do so yeah thanks for watching guys i really appreciate it